Good afternoon, everybody, as we are gathering up. Let me get myself kind of online as well. Uh, it's time for midday prayer. Let me know you're here as well as you can put in your prayer request. If anybody specific you would like to, for us to pray for this evening or to this afternoon, let me know that. And we will include them in our prayers. So um, as we have folks that are gathering up with us, I see Linda's here and Louise and a couple other folks are joining in. Um, so it's a pretty day out. Uh, surprised by the snow we were having this morning, but um, I don't know, something about a kid in me, I always like a snow day. Uh, I like it when it snows. Um, and I can say that because I have the world's best commute. I just have to walk across the parking lot. So, um, hey, Keldra, good to see you. And uh, Gail and Debbie and Beth, as folks are uh, gathering up, Diane as well. Uh, so we're going to get started this morning, uh, this afternoon, uh, as we prepare our hearts and minds to center ourselves in God's word, uh, in scripture, in song, and in prayer. So let us uh, breathe in the breath of God. And then we'll breathe out our cares and our concerns. And we breathe in the love of God. We breathe out our doubts and our despairs. We breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our fears and our frustrations. So our reading today comes from Second Chronicles. Um, I've been reading through first, it was First Chronicles and now Second Chronicles uh, with our Moravian daily text as we read together as a synod. Um, and I'm not only going to read a portion of this. It's what's happening here is uh, Solomon has now built the temple, uh, the first temple that was destroyed in about 586 or 587 BCE. Um, and they're doing a dedication. And what struck me really was uh, today was Solomon's prayer, Solomon's prayer um, at the dedication. Now, remember, this temple is huge. It's got all those parts that, you know, very specific instructions about how to build it. Uh, and they are fashioning it. There's, there's been, as, as you would think, there's been singing, there's been dancing, there's been praise and worship. And then Solomon prays and hear his prayer. And he said, Oh, Lord. God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or on earth, keeping covenant and steadfast love with your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You who have kept, you who have kept for your servant, my father David, what you promised to him. Indeed, you promised with your mouth and this day have fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord of God of Israel, Keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children keep to their way to walk in my law as you have walked before me. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant David. So there's Solomon's prayer. And what really struck me about this prayer, um, as, as, you know, as Solomon has um, watched the temple kind of come to life, as it were, and they're having this dedication, you, you know, he's re, he remembers that David had wanted to build a temple for God's presence. Um, and God uh, told him that uh, he didn't really want David to build a temple. God didn't. Um, that God was perfectly fine, uh, residing in a tent, kind of wandering with God's people, uh, but that that maybe Solomon, David's successor, would maybe build a, a temple for God. And that's what Solomon has now done. And I, in this prayer, what, what really strikes, he doesn't really give thanks to God for the building, doesn't give thanks to God for anything else other than God's faithfulness. Is God's steadfast faithfulness to promises that God had made through David, one regarding the building of the temple, and the other regarding that there would be a king that would, would rule over God's people through the lineage of David that would last forever. 
And so Solomon has is giving thanks for God's fulfillment and steadfast faithfulness to one part of that that covenant or that promise, which came in the form of the temple. And he's also reminding God there's more to come, reminding even God's people, and yet there's more to come. That this isn't the end of God's work in the world. This isn't the end of God's faithfulness to God's people, but that God will continue to be faithful in providing this king, this ruler, this judge who will sit on the throne for all eternity. Now we know that then we put our trust in God's fulfillment of that particular promise through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, right? Then God continues to remain faithful to that, to that covenant that we would always have someone ruling over us. Um, and what Jesus shows us is how God will continue to judge and to rule. And that is through the lens of love, through the lens of forgiveness, through the lens of faithfulness. And I just thought that was a really good place for us to kind of sit and be in this day, the snowy kind of day, when maybe we look out and we see how pristine and clean the world looks, that we might be reminded of how clean we are in the eyes of God, even as we stumble, even as we fail, and that God will remain faithful to that particular promise. And for that, we can say amen, right? So our friends from Trinity Camp Hill are going to sing for us, and then we'll get back together and pray. If you have any specific um, prayer requests, please put them in the comments. I'll be monitoring them while we um, are listening to our folks from Trinity Camp Hill. And I'll include those in our prayer time, okay? So here we go. Um, our friends from Trinity. And in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the My 
And we're back. My lighthouse <clears throat> who will lead us and bring us safely back to shore. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we do give you thanks for the gift of this day, for the gift of this time, for the gift of this community, for the gift of prayer, the gift of forgiveness, for the gift of love, for the gift of being together as one. And God, we ask that you continue to walk with our leaders of our nation as uh, they continue to do the work that you have called them to do, that you will sustain them, that they will govern for the good of all. We um, thank you for the gift of creation and help us to remember that we are its stewards and it is up to us to care for all that you have made. And we thank you for your healing presence in the lives of all those who suffer in so many different ways. And today, God, we specifically ask for your healing presence to be with Donna Miller and Roland Miller, Kathy Miller, Kathy, Noah Hall, Margaret Fulcomer, Shelley McLaughlin, Laura Dareth, Terry, Ben Lehman, Howard Fales, Rebecca Neal, Jeff, Glenn Hardesty, Kim Brady, Carol Brzezinski, Betty Crandall, Connie Koss, Charles McCarty, Susan Bethke, McKenna Day, Thelma James, Esther Merson, Barbara Dareth, Debbie Moss, Jane Cox, Kirsten, Beth Webb, Lauren Mueller, and those that we name aloud or silently in our hearts at this time. Hutch, Pastor, Pastor Kelly, Pastor Jody, all those who are suffering with COVID-19 and its aftermath, all those who grieve, Gracious God, help us to remember that you are our lighthouse. You are the source of our life, the guide for our life, the source of all love and healing, and that we are so blessed that you are so faithful to the promises that you made. Now, God, we come before you and we pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now we breathe in the breath of God. And we breathe out our tension and our turmoil. And we breathe in the love of God. And we breathe out our haste and our apprehensions. And we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our work and our worry. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace today and always. God bless. Um, it's great being with you today. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great one. Bye now.